Hello and welcome to Calvin's Garage. Today's video is 10 essential tools for the intermediate mechanic. So, you started out doing some work on cars, you've gained some more experience, and you find that the tools that you have just aren't cutting it anymore. I am going to assume that you watched my first video and you have all of those tools that I told you in that video were good ideas for people who were first starting out and now you're looking as looking into what tools you want to get next so let's get started right off the bat number one you should get more pliers I mentioned in my previous video that pliers come in all shapes and sizes and when you're first starting out it can be kind of overwhelming to see all these different types of pliers and trying to understand what the difference is. That's why in my previous video I recommend you just get one pair of needle nose pliers and one pair of lock jaw pliers. However, there is a reason that all these different types of pliers exist. And as you gain more skills and more confidence working on things, you'll find that your two pair of pliers just isn't cutting it for all the different things you need to do. Having special pliers for each job actually increases your dexterity and increases your ability to work with them. Let's say you are working with wire and you want to maybe straighten some wire out. Well, that's where lineman's pliers come in, and they come in various sizes and shapes, but lineman's pliers are great for working with wires. Uh, we also have these jeweler's pliers here, which are great for working with some springs and some other small wires, especially when you're trying to curve wires. And then, of course, there's different sizes and styles of lock jaw pliers. These slip lock pliers are great for holding things that are kind of round. They are okay for taking off nuts and bolts. And if you just need to hold something, they're, they're pretty good. I always like to have two pair of lock jaw pliers. That way, again, I can work with two pair at once for whatever I'm doing, whether I'm trying to hold something steady or whether I am trying to take off a nut and a bolt or whether I am trying to bend a piece of sheet metal. The second tool I would recommend for an intermediate mechanic, someone who has some experience and is looking to expand their repertoire and what they can actually do uh, to work on cars, is an OBD2 code reader. Now these come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Some of them are more advanced than others. Some of them can tell you a lot more information about the car. This one, I got it for free, and it literally just tells you the OBD2 codes, the reason why the check engine light is on, and it also is able to clear the codes, so you can use this to diagnose and figure out what's wrong with the car, and then once you fix the thing, you can use this to clear out the code. There are other ones that will read specific manufacturer error codes, so you can figure out why some other lights are on and some other information about the car. There are ones that you can tell you things like the engine mixture, and you can determine things about how the engine is running. Um, but I would recommend at least a basic OBD2 code reader and that will help you be able to diagnose and fix your own car. Also, as you gain more experience as a mechanic, you might want to start working on the electrical systems in cars. If you are working on the electrical systems in cars, first I'm going to assume that you have a digital multimeter, like I mentioned in my previous video, um, but now you can get more specialty tools for working on electrical systems. For that, I recommend having a set of wire strippers and also a dedicated pair of wire cutters. Now, I actually, in my tool bag, have two pair of wire cutters. I have my good pair of wire cutters, which have a nice, clean, sharp blade and are very great for cutting wire. And then I have my bad pair of wire cutters 
that are used to cut things that shouldn't be cut by wire cutters. Things like thicker, uh, thicker wires, uh, thicker cable, places where I don't really care about the clean cut, but I don't want to risk damaging the blade of my good wire cutters. And then periodically I'll buy a new pair of good wire cutters, and then the good ones will become the bad ones, and the bad ones will be scrapped. I prefer using a dedicated pair of wire cutters rather than a pair, uh, rather than the wire cutters that are included on a pair of needle nose pliers, or even the wire cutters that are included on this tool right here, because the blade where you actually can cut wire is right out. It goes all the way out to the front, so you can cut wire without having to get the tool around the wire. If you're trying to cut a wire, to cut it with this tool, you have to wrap the handle around the wire. And if the wire is still zip tied together with other wires or in with the frame, then you have to cut the zip ties and then re-zip tie them. Whereas if you have this small pair of wire cutters that, have, that goes out all the way to here, you don't have to get as far in. So it's just easier to uh, easier to use than wire cutters on here. Now, wire cutters are for cutting wire entirely, and then wire strippers are these things right here, and they have them for a different size, they're, they're labeled for different size wire, and basically they're designed to cut the shielding, cut the rubber, well, most of the time it's plastic, but cut the casing off of the wire so that you can connect the wires or connect the wire to whatever component. And then this one is also a crimping tool, so it's used when you have crimp on electrical connectors. You can put the connector on and then you can use this to make sure that the connector fully attaches to the wire. So just some basic tools that you need if you plan to start working on electrical systems. Another good thing if you're working on electrical systems would be a test light. This is a simple uh, light bulb attached to a metal rod on one end and attached to a wire that you can clip onto something else on the other end. And basically this can be used to test the continuity of the circuit and it's a very useful device. If you connect it to two places and the light bulb lights up, you know that there is voltage be running between the two places. It can help you figure out how the circuits of your vehicle are designed, you can figure out if there's a problem with any of the circuits, and you can also use it to test things like whether the ground, whether a piece of equipment is properly grounded. Another piece of equipment that I would recommend for an intermediate mechanic are some brushes. I always like to have a few of these lying around with some different firmness options on the bristles. The tough bristles on the steel brush will le probably leave marks behind. However, this is going to be the most effective for removing rust, removing dirt, removing paint, remove whatever you need to remove. Uh, the softer bristles are good for removing light surface corrosion and some dirt and they aren't going to leave any heavy marks on the equipment like these would. Now, I usually have a few lying around with some different types of bristles and some different sizes, just so that I have a brush that will work. The next thing I would recommend is a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet. A rubber mallet is a hammer, and it could be a hammer of this size or it could be a large hammer, and the hammer has rubber at the end and that protects the surface of whatever you're hammering on so that you don't have steel to steel contact. A dead blow hammer is a rubber mallet that has some loose sand in the head of it and the point behind that is a regular rubber mallet when it hits something all that recoil, all that elastic energy in the rubber is going to cause it to bounce back. You hit something and it bounces back. A dead blow hammer, the sand inside the head of that hammer actually absorbs some of that force so that when you hit something 
the hammer stays down. It doesn't bounce back. I recommend having either a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer because you should never be hammering on anything with a metal hammer. Now, whether I actually follow that rule all the time, eh, you can tell by the shape of my pry bar that I definitely do not follow that rule all the time. However, it is an important safety thing, and with a metal hammer, you do have the possibility of breaking whatever you're hammering on. Now, I know my pry bar isn't going to break, but if I'm hammering on something on the side of an engine, especially if it's rusty, you never know if it's going to take the force from the metal hammer, but a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet might be okay. Next up on the list, almost like I planned it that way, is the pry bar. Now, you should never use screwdrivers as a pry bar. That is an important safety lesson. So, having a dedicated pry bar that is purpose-built for prying on things is important. The next tool that I would recommend for a kind of intermediate level mechanic is some files. Files, as the name implies, are great for filing things down. You can use these to remove burrs after you drill a hole or saw some metal. You can also use them to clean up some gasket surfaces and basically whatever you need filed. It's always a good idea to have just a couple of these around and because you never know when you're going to need them, especially as you do more and more things with cars. The next tool I would recommend is, I would recommend that you get a drill. It can be a cordless drill or a drill you plug in. Um, and if you are going to be drilling on metal, you need to make sure that you have some punches. These punches, you use a dead blow hammer and you put the punch against the piece of metal right where you want to drill the hole, and then you pound on it and it creates a little indentation in the metal. This is very important because it gives your drill bit a place to rest so that you can actually drill the hole. There's a video here where I kind of go over how to drill holes through metal and how to use one of these punches. But if you are drilling holes in metal, I would you need to have one of these. Okay, number 10. Last but not least, I would recommend that you have a scraper, and I'm actually going to expand that a little bit. You want some scrapers and some chisels are also pretty nice tools to have. Chisels are great for if you have a stuck bolt that you absolutely cannot get off, and you need to get that bolt off for whatever reason, you can use the chisel to knock the head off of that bolt. Uh, but then you have to drill out the bolt, but that's okay because you've got the cordless drill and you've got the punch and you've got some drill bits so you can drill out that hole, extract what's left of that bolt, or just drill a new hole and tap the hole uh, to put new threads in. But these are good to have around. And, as a quick little bonus, as you do gain more experience working on cars and start tackling more and more jobs, it is important to think about what specialty tools you might want to invest in. Again, these are things that are either specific to a specific vehicle or sets of vehicles, or things that can be used across all vehicles but make your life a lot easier you can think about getting things like a power bleeder to ha be able to bleed your brakes without having another person pumping the brake pedal. You can also think about things if you start doing more uh, suspension work or steering work, maybe buying some of the tools that are specific to that would be important. It's important to be constantly evaluating, is my current setup the most effective way to do this job is it really and also on the flip side thinking is it really worth it to buy this tool to do this job a little bit faster or a little bit easier is this tool worth my money
And that's a constant struggle no matter whether you are just starting out as a mechanic or whether you have been a mechanic for years and you're thinking about getting the latest and greatest.